Welcome to Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by Jacob Valentine, vocalist for the Manchester UK band Guilt Trip. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up! What's going on, Caffeinated Crew? Today I'm with Jay from Guilt Trip, Manchester's finest. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, you seem to be having a better grip on the day than me. Uh, I just woke up a little foggy, a little, you know, misty-eyed. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a bit jealous. That was my morning as well, but it is like one nearly 2 p.m. now, so I've come around a bit. You've had some some breakfast, some uh, yeah, some, Got some a bit hours. of food in there. Yeah, there you go. Bit of coffee. <laughs> well, speaking of coffee, are you drinking anything on your side? Uh, I've just got water. I had a coffee, but I I just I drank it. Can't just let it sit there going cold, man. I hate iced coffee. I think to be honest, I'm not really much of a coffee guy, but the fact that it's warm is what attracts me to it. But when people have iced coffee, it just knocks me sick, man. I can't stand that. <laughs> yeah, I, so that's like a very North American thing, iced coffee, I think. Yeah. Uh, where, like, we, especially in the hot summers, we, we, we love iced coffee over here. Um, people in Montreal are insane and drink iced coffee in the winter when it's, like, minus 20. Uh, I don't understand yeah, that's, that. Yeah, that's wild, man. Yeah, they're insane. Um, I don't think it's even like refreshing at all. Like coffee, just just bitter. It's so bitter. I don't know. There's some. There, there's some that's like when it's made well, when it's not like a bunch of you know sugar and milk or creamer. Or when it's like a nice, yeah. nicely made iced coffee, it can be good. But I'm like you. I prefer warm. The warmth like wakes me up, yeah. warms my body up, like makes me yeah, feel like exactly. I can. That's- yeah, makes you feel like you can move. Yeah. Exactly, especially in the winter, like there's nothing worse than waking up in the winter, just in general, because it's freezing. Freezing. So you've got to have something something warm down here. Yep. That's so I'm drinking one that uh that uh, actually they started carrying a few like micro roasters from around Montreal and some of the grocery stores, which is really cool. Just kind of exposing Sick. people to more than just like Tim Hortons and Starbucks blends. <laughs> um so this one's from ninety four Celsius. It is called Aprokerma? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's from Peru. Um, it's pretty good. Got like orangey uh-huh. flavors, peach, kind of interesting with like a bit of chocolate. Yeah. 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 Our guitarist Jackie's like a bit of a coffee guy. So I'm sure like if he was here, we, we'd, we'd be delving deeper into, <laughs> into that kind of thing. But for me, I just... I do like it like on the off chance. I, I have one every morning, but that's that's like my limit, my daily limit. Mm-hmm. Too much caffeine otherwise. See, that's good. You're not, uh, you haven't, you haven't like kind of ruined it where like now I have to have two at least. I have to have like one in the morning, one in the afternoon <laughs> or else by like yeah. three, or, three or four, I'm like dragging like, oh God. Yeah, yeah. You build up like a tolerance to it. <laughs> it's More it's like, an, it. it's honestly, it's like an addiction. It's terrible. It literally is, yeah. Well, I know that you're not the biggest coffee person, but living in Manchester, I know that there's a pretty, I think there's a pretty decent coffee scene. I I checked it out when I was there for Outbreak and there was like a lot of great shops kind of in like that downtown and I think a bit east is where they tend to be. Um, Is there a shop that you like to go to? No, not really. Not really. It is a good scene though these days. I feel like everyone I know over the me loves coffee like everyone in, in my band does like a coffee except for brad but brad don't really drink hot drinks at all but everyone else just coffee enthusiasts man every every few hours on the road coffee 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 is it like uh when you are going to the uk are you all stopping at costa like all the time yeah yeah any service <laughs> that has like a costa or a starbucks or anything like that and we're stopping there that's that's 
I, I didn't get Acosta when I it was like my first time in the UK last year or yeah, earlier this past year. And uh, I didn't stop at a single Costa because I was going to like all like the small shops. But I kind of yeah. regret it because it looked like like the Starbucks of the UK. Like it looked like. Yeah, I'd say, and, I mean, we've got Starbucks, but I would say Costa's a little bit better, I think, in, well, just in my experience. But my opinion is not like the most reliable because I'm not, I don't really drink much. So, But for the food, is the food better at Costa? Like I know they have baps and stuff like that. Um, yeah, probably. Probably is. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't beat like Greg's for that kind of thing. Greg's is the one, man, and um, they, they do all right coffees as well, Greg's, but they're not known for the coffees. But yeah, I'd say Costa's better than Starbucks for for like the, the food and the snack side of things. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, I kind of regret not going, but also I didn't want to. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, yeah, the, the smaller places are always going to be better anyway. That's it's right. the service and everything like that. It's just, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, but I will say around outbreak, there was nothing like, cause yeah, I was, it was in the middle of like nowhere, man. We, I'd never been there before, but. Oh, at the, at the, at the, the bowlers, uh, exhibition. Yeah. yeah. There was yeah. like a giant mall, like a 30. Yeah. The Trafford Center, yeah. 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 That's legendary, man. It was like some shit you'd see in Vegas, like in the middle. Of... Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. I feel like people from all over England come come to the Trafford Centre. It's like it's one of the biggest like shopping centres that we've got in the UK. I'd say, or one of the best at least. I mean, it was really nice, and it, I got we got lost in there one morning because it was <laughs> just like took a wrong turn. <laughs> Did you stay yeah. close by? Yeah, we stayed at that. Yeah. Uh, there's like the Holiday Inn that was right there, or whatever. Yeah, sick. Where I think ninety percent of people were staying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it was nice. We could walk over and hang out, walk that yeah. scary like path down the side of the road or whatever. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's cool in there, man. There's there's so like literally everything you need is in there. I mean, I used to go as like a, a proper little kid for all like the toy shops and, and mm -hmm. Lego shops, stuff like that. And just as you get older, there's still there's something for you, like no matter what age you are, it's just it's just a cool experience, I feel like. And they've got a cinema and like mini golf and stuff. We've got, got it all. Yeah. Like a little city in there. We like went to the food court. And if you want to live your like Leonardo DiCaprio dream, you can go to the food court like the Titanic. Yeah. yeah. It's like, so yeah. this is cool. It's weird. It is cool, man. It's different. It's always <laughs> yeah. been like that, though. It's awesome. Uh, and why did we discovered Primark? Never been to Primark. You can Primark. buy a pair of shorts for like a pound. Yeah, can't cheap. beat that shit. I mean, it'll only last you probably like two weeks, but <laughs> pounds can't go wrong with a pound for a pair of shorts. Yeah, they're like throwaway show shorts, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, you guys, I I saw y'all at uh, at Trackside here in Montreal a few weeks ago um, when y'all were doing that yeah. Canadian run with Scarfold, which Scarfold is awesome. Those dudes are great. Yeah, um, sick band. And then Northwalk was on some of those dates as well. So shout out Dave. Um, what was what was the experience for being in Canada as a band for the first time? It was sick, man. It was better than we thought. Like I, I went into that thinking we'd have like a couple of good shows and then most of them would be literally like the shows we had back in the day when we first started, started up the band. But they were all like really sick. There was only one bad show, which was Sherbrooke. And there was like five people there which was tough, but it's going to happen like he's thousands of miles away from home. I'd, I think seven out of eight shows being, being sick and two of them were sold out as well. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd, I mean, we couldn't have asked for much better than that. I don't think. Was it the Ontario shows that were sold out? Um, it was the, the first one. Um, the track That was the track side one. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that yeah. Was track and then side. it was the last one in um, three rivers. Oh, nice. That's that's super yeah. cool. Yeah, that was in like a pub, so it was only small, but there was like fifty people there, man. It was sick. And I, I, I'm not really like I don't think we've ever played a floor show where I felt like it was like dead sick, but that one was was sick. Was it at the Royal uh, Tavern or whatever that spot? That's Something like, like that, yeah. In the middle of the houses with the park. Yeah, yeah, and you go down into it, and then out the backside like where you you merge yourself and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was cool, man. 
That's awesome. It was a sick show to end the run on as well. Well, I'm happy that y'all had a good experience. Uh, I, I know a lot of bands, like especially predominantly like English speaking bands that come through like Montreal or Quebec and they're like, you know, it's so rude, the French and all this stuff. But to know <laughs> that you guys, to know that you guys had a good experience, I'm, I'm really happy because uh, some bands get kind of turned off by yeah, like, yeah. sometimes they get the wrong attitude from people and stuff. And it's, it's not like that a lot of the time. So I think it helped that we were scaffold as well because a lot like I think three out of the four of them are naturally French speaking anyway. Mm -hmm. So like anytime we we ran into someone who, who could only speak French, we had like an, an interpreter pretty much yeah. there. And they looked after us really well. So yeah. I know Zab's like uh he seems like he's kinda like the tour dad, like he just kinda yeah. handles everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was he, him and um JS drove us like they split between each other and yeah, we I mean X was definitely looking out for us and and all that shit, man. Yeah, it was good. Nice. How was like having a little tour manager with us? Yeah, yeah. How was Ramuski in the middle, like driving eight hours? You know what? It it wasn't too bad. You know, it was it was like it was one of the quieter shows, but it still popped off for us. And it, to be honest, I think the other bands went down dead well as well. And it was just it, it just felt like a good vibe. Like I feel like sometimes. When you play to a bit of an empty room, there's always that like you feel like negative energy, like because mm -hmm. there's not many people there. You feel like the people who are there are not even bothered about you. But it, it felt really good, man. It felt like everyone there was there to see us and Scarfall and Northwalk, and yeah, we had a really good time, man. Better than expected. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was surprised when they picked Ramuski because it's kind of like an old. It, it used to be a tour stop for a lot of bands. Yeah, but I know that Dave like loves playing there because he's like you know it's they don't get a lot of shows so when they get shows they they go crazy. And yeah. I same same with Three Rivers was I played Three Rivers last week and there was like twenty people but half of them are swinging in the pit. I was like this is yeah insane. yeah that's that's what we you know it's like every show even the ones that didn't like have a lot of people there everyone there was was moshing and having a good time. That was the first time at Trackside I've ever seen anybody like windmill, spin kick, <laughs> quotations, crowd kill. Like that was yeah. the first time I've seen that at Trackside ever. Yeah, it was. that was sick, man. It was yes. a sick show, show to start the tour off as well. I think after that one, we thought like every show is going to be like this. It's going to be fucking crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a sick show. They were, they were all good apart from the one, Sherbrooke. Was that at uh, Le Murdoch? Did y'all play that 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 like um? It's kind of a dive venue. Maybe I don't. I, I, I'm terrible with venues. I don't know, but it was like um, I think he just got his alcohol license, so it was like a little bar. Oh, okay. The, the venue itself was actually pretty cool. If it was full, then like you could have a, a, an insane show there. But yeah, when there's five people there, it's. it's not the best experience. And that sounds weird, man. I feel like if anyone's listening from Sherbrooke, I don't know, you need to move on, man. It's fucking weird down there. <laughs> Sherbrooke is, it's a college town for most of the year. So, and I don't think that college was in even when y'all came through. I think it was kind of like starting up maybe. Yeah, maybe, but yeah. Maybe it was still a ghost town or I don't know. I've been to Sherbrooke one time and not like willingly. It was for work. <laughs> so yeah yeah it's it's odd man but not loose played i think in montreal the, on the same day so i think i mean oh yeah you're that's go, go to sherbrooke to see guilt trip or you're gonna go to montreal to see not loose it's a bit of a no-brainer i think yeah i had co-workers from sherbrooke come to the not loose show it's like a two-hour drive yeah, um, yeah. and kubla khan kubla khan was like the next week yeah Y'all picked a prime time to come to Canada because we had fucking that. There was like some fest in Quebec City uh, where it was like Stick to Your Guns, Knock to Loose, Kubla Khan, Terror. Uh, I think Omerta was on that too. Was sick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we kept seeing like every town that we played and then the next day, another six show was going on that we, <laughs> that we missed. So yeah, it was weird. And I think on um, the first night at Trackside, My Chemical Romance were playing yep. like round the corner as well. So we, we were going to go to that at first, but we thought, nah, let's not push it. <laughs> let's play the <this> show. <laughs> yeah. 
it's funny. I had friends, like I was texting uh, some dudes from the scene. I was like, are you coming to Trackside tonight? It's going to be fun. They're like, dude, I'm going to MCR. I was like, what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> At the Bell Center? What? So We've got some big Mike Chem fans in the band though. So we were, t- we were tempting like sneaking off and then coming back for our set. Yeah. But it was just, it was just a bit risky, man. It's it's a bit of a and then finding parking is impossible over there. Like it would have been yeah. like hell trying to find somewhere to park, but it might have been worth it. Yeah, we were there the night before. Um, Fab took us around like some some like bars and stuff, and for some food, and we we spent like probably half the night trying to park. Yeah. To be fair, yeah, that's, that's Montreal's notorious for taking parking spots away. It's terrible. Yeah. I'm glad y'all had fun. I love the video that Gab did for y'all. It was really, really cool. I like to see yeah. trackside look like that, like in a video. Yeah, it was a sick video. We were dead, we were dead happy with that. Um, so yeah, it was super cool. All my friends that weren't or were at the show, they like watched the video. They're like, this looks way crazier than it felt yeah. like when I was there. <laughs> like, yeah, it made it look good, man. I mean, it was good, but it, it made the venue look like some proper professional setup and everything on there was sick. Yeah, it's cool because that room's so small that if you get 30 people in there, it looks full. Yeah, exactly. And so when you have people like standing around and then you have like a dude spin kicking, it looks like the pit is going crazy. But yeah. I mean, it was going crazy. Like we, we were, we were, there's only so it. much crazy you can have in like a room that big though. We were throwing it down as, as hard as we could without hurting people. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, about Manchester hardcore. I don't know a lot about, uh, I guess, Eng- the English scene, but being from yeah. out, like being at Outbreak, I saw a lot of bands that were like local, like uh, like what's the name, the uh, like Last Wishes. I was yeah. like in the uh, Last Witness. Yeah. Uh, who else was like on the bill that was because you guys played the pre-show yeah yeah and then there was another uh there was the ordeal i think was selling merch as well through like the distro so there's a lot of like cool bands that i had never heard of so kind of how did you get into the scene who was the band that was kind of like popping off and and big locally at the time um well when we started like desolated with shoes just across the uk probably Mm -hmm. all over the world to be honest they were like a massive name and um one of our really early shows we had another band before guilt trip um not the same people. Me and Jack and Brad were part of it, but other than that. And um, we got to play with Desolated one time in Manchester and we felt like oh, we, we were like brand new to the scene and everything. We thought, oh, we're from Manchester. It's going to be sick. And there was like, I don't know, like 15 people watching us. And then we watched Desolated after and it was like 200 people just yeah. killing each other. <laughs> and it made us question like whether we were doing doing the right thing or not. But yeah, when we started coming up, it was desolated and like Malev started taking off and stuff. Bands like that. I think um, there was obviously like the OG bands playing big shows like Knuckle Dust and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, from there, it's just been a gradual ascension for us. And we've seen a lot of bands that we looked up to at that time, like Survival and Trial and Error. They've called it a day. And then there's new bands that take their place. And it's just like in, the, the ball keeps on moving, man. It seems like there's a really strong scene from what I could tell. Like, you know, a band gets up and they're like, Manchester Hardcore, where you at? And like all these people, it's like come out of nowhere. It was crazy. Yeah. It took us ages to like really feel like at home because we're from Manchester. So it, we, we never had like the reaction that we wanted to early, early doors. But after like probably the last, I'd say two years, we've started seeing like we've, we've sold out Star and Garter once. We sold out. Um, a venue last year for our release show and mm-hmm. um, we played a Fury Fest in Manchester and they, they were like probably three of our top 10 shows ever so I think Manchester's now started picking us up and enjoying us for what we are yeah that's awesome I mean any any any, any band that comes to Manchester like I said before like Trial and Error used to come um, there's like Rotten Out came over from the US once and it was fucking like yeah. insane so it's, it's a good spot to play and I feel like a lot of tours miss Manchester and play like Leeds, which Leeds and Sheffield are both just as sick anyway, but I think Manchester should get a bit more love with, with big tours like that, especially. Yeah, it is like, even I talk to people that are from the UK, 
and they're like avoid london go to manchester manchester is more chill and i was like it's true it's better yeah um, i mean I, I love manchester me i think just just as a city in general it's it's the best that we've got in the uk because it, it is just like you don't feel like in london it's so busy you yeah. can't you can't you can't even hear yourself think or anything man and i think when you come to manchester it's there's like a lot of breathing room there's everything everything that london has pretty much you've got in manchester and I don't know it's just a better vibe in my opinion but i mean that's probably my bias speaking because i'm from here i live here yeah well that's even coming as an outsider spending like a few days in london i felt like i was choked like yeah too many people everybody's rushing around so you kind of feel like hurried everywhere uh it's just to enjoy i think man. yeah i did have great coffee in london though i will say that but yeah. manchester for sure it felt like more of a better vibe and you know, you can breathe, the air feels better. Like it's just yeah. feels so cleaner, I, doesn't it? Yeah. I I agree. The airport isn't as shitty yeah. <laughs> as, as the London airports. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, but that's cool. I, I know that like even Leeds and Manchester seem to have a bit of a crossover when it comes to like the scene as well. So Yeah. You know, I mean, when we're close, we're only like a 45 minutes apart. So, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of Leeds bands do well in Manchester. A lot of Manchester bands do well in Leeds. It's like, it's like the same, the same kind of scene, really, I would say. So the move of Outbreak going from Canal Mills to like a Manchester venue, was that weird for people or was it like not um, really? I don't, I don't think so. Like Canal Mills is, has, has been a sick venue for the festival mm -hmm. for like however many years it was there, but. I think they just wanted they wanted to do it on a bigger scale and the um the new venue is just like huge man i don't know how many how many people must have been there like five thousand maybe more than that something I think they like said that. close to six or something yeah six thousand yeah and i mean at, at canal mills it was like three two two or three two and a half something like that so both sick venues but if you want to do something on a larger scale you've got to, you've got to get a bigger venue that's the first step and it seemed to go down like insanely well but yeah. I think a lineup like they had, they could do it anywhere in the UK. The UK is so small; people just people make that four-hour max journey to watch to watch a lineup like that. I reckon there were people from everywhere, though, like Germany, Spain, a lot of Spanish yeah. people, uh, people from like Australia. I talked to some dude from New Jersey that was picking up cans one day, like. It's crazy. It was so weird just to like see the shirts and see like how people from different areas dress like a little bit differently, but like yeah. you can tell that they're part of the scene. But it, it was just like a super cool experience to see all these people from all over the world like be at this small convention center in the middle of England all because like we like the same music. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, it was sick, man. I think it pulled a lot of like international people more than usual because. Every time I've been to Outbreak, there's always been people from like other countries there and stuff. But the scale of it this time, there was every other person I spoke to was like from some far off land somewhere. It's crazy. <laughs> it was funny seeing like Barcelona hardcore. I'm like, what you, there's a hardcore scene in Barcelona. That's crazy. Yeah, we've I'm, never we've never played Spain either, so that's a surprise to me. Well, y'all probably do really well seeing how many fucking shirts that said Barcelona hardcore on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, lots of things, though, yeah. <laughs> they do France and in Spain and come back up when it's winter so that it's like nice and sunny when you go. Yeah, that's the move. That's the way to do it. <laughs> so you guys released Rain City last year. Yeah, that's right. What's in the books aside from I know you have a tour coming up with Stray, which, you know, shout that out as well. But but is there any plan to get the uh, to get something else rolling in terms of writing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're writing an LP currently. We've got um, a couple of songs that we're trying to get released in the next few weeks or so. Um, and yeah, I think it's early next year we're looking at trying to release it. Maybe, maybe like April time latest. I mean, it's a, it, it's such a long winded experience. Like from from the moment you finish writing it to the moment it comes out, yeah, it can take like months and even even like up to a year, man. Mm -hmm. so it's it's hard to put a, a real accurate time on it but we've got a couple of songs lined up to come out pretty soon just to tie everyone over and make ourselves feel better because i think when you don't release music for a while you start feeling like oh you feel the pressure of people want new stuff from you and i think the way we've grown this year this has been our biggest year like 
by far. So I think we've got a lot of new new supporters, and and it'd be nice to show them something something more recent. I mean, Rain, Rain City to us is quite recent still, but mm. I don't even think that it's like a super accurate representation of our band really because we wrote it all in lockdown when there was no shows, and I think that the translation from like hearing it on your iPod to seeing it live it don't translate as well as we wanted it to so I think we need to release something that more accurately shows like what we're about at this moment like just written in the room together instead of like some dude demoed and then sent it to yeah the yeah exactly and, yeah yeah well I, I liked hearing Rain City songs live I thought it was I mean it was chaotic like being in the room but like also I did yeah. enjoy hearing like uh hearing the music it, it is a bit different because i know that y'all in the past have been a bit more like uh like crossover so a bit more thrash yeah. parts and things like that and this one seems a bit more of like that kind of beat down mixed in with you know some faster like metallic yeah. parts but um is the direction going to kind of stay the same and just adjust to y'all's energy a bit or no we're what? gonna we're gonna try and go back a little bit to like I mean, we, for us, like, Unrelenting Force has always been our staple. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the songs go off live. And um, I think we're more proud of that than we are of, of River Lies or Rain City. So we want to we wanna go back to that sound as much as we can and, and get the, like, the crossover influence back. Because I think that's what separated us at the time as well. And then we just kind of got lost among the swarm, like, with River Lies. So now I think we've we've done some soul searching and we're ready to go back to to the way we want things to be. Like there's so many outside influences when you're writing music and you want to sound like this band and that band, but you've got to find your own sound and stick to it. And that's always going to get you further than than trying to copy anyone else. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, even talking to Gus from Omerta, they had been a thrash crossover band in Texas, which every band in Texas is thrash crossover. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so they took a soul searching moment and then kind of wrote from there, like what they wanted to be. And that's when they came yeah. out with hyper violence, which is an insane EP. So yeah, exactly. I'm happy to, to hear like you being in another band on the other side of the world also being like, well, we just want to be ourselves and like, you yeah. know, fuck the influences. Like, let's just do our shit. Yeah. It's super hard to not compare yourself to like other bands. Cause you see certain certain bands like getting crazy live reactions and you think oh i want a bit of that and then it, it's just as a negative impact on on the way you write things because you're always you're always trying to live up to like someone else you know what i mean you're always trying to do it better than someone else or whatever when just do what what's coming naturally man and that's you you're always going to perform better with stuff that you're more comfortable with anyway mm -hmm. yeah that's that's the truth how how important do you see like uh touring like and getting outside of your hometown as as opposed to like playing a lot in your kind of local scene like do you see it just as important or is it more important to play i think it's more important i think if you, if you develop like a good fan base in your local scene and stuff then especially like a really like loyal fans will always come come and watch you even if you don't come back for like three years you just mm -hmm. get more people there but playing outside of like your means and pushing yourself and going to like different countries. Like two years ago, we'd never thought we'd, we'd see Canada at this point in, in guilt trip, but now we've seen it. Now we've, we've been to Germany. We're going back France, e everywhere in Europe. We want to see Australia and Japan and all that stuff. And I think that's, that's where you really grow as a band, like going to these different places and putting on a show for people and, and stuff and we've put like i said we've played the most shows this year and we've in turn seen like the most growth for the band so i think it definitely goes hand in hand like seeing that success and playing all these different places mm -hmm. yeah i i've seen you guys like in the past year the following has just been climbing like i, I looked yeah. at spotify the other day and Y'all are like at almost a hundred thousand monthly listeners, which is a lot. Yeah, we're we're on a hundred. We're on a hundred now. Yeah, and that was when we released Rain City. We were on like nine, which is still sick. Like we were buzzing off nine, mm -hmm. and then we went on our Euro tour in April, and we had, I think we had nineteen, and then we came back. We had like twenty 
two. I mean, we keep track of it because yeah. we're just like that. You know what I mean? It feels good, but seeing a hundred thousand monthly listeners is just like a crazy moment for us, man. Like I never thought we'd get there. Not this year, maybe not even next year. I thought that was would be something like super far down the line, but to be here now. And it worries me because I feel like there's a hundred thousand people and what are they listening to is like <laughs> if they're listening to River of Lies, I am <laughs> I'm fucking panicking, man. We need to get some new tunes out. I've been bumping Rain City. I just like the way it, like the recording it and everything sounds really good. Like I'm an, like I come from like an audio background, so I love when okay. records sound like energetic and there's like elements in there. Some of the singing I really liked. Like it's just it's a fun, it's fun to listen to it in the car and drive. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's when when we listened to it back, we thought like it's it's so clean to listen just to like sit and listen to. Mm-hmm. Like if you're one of them people that can sit and listen to heavy music just as you are, then it feels really good. But then when we started playing it live, we realized it was really difficult for us to play mm-hmm. and it didn't really get the reaction that we wanted. But I think as far as like the recording and stuff, I think the guy we use, Robin, he absolutely killed it. And we're, we're using him on our new stuff as well. Cause like that's the most, that's the happiest we've ever been with how something's, something's actually sounded through, through the earphones for us. Mm-hmm. And I think it was, it was like, it ended up being a, a really like moody EP, you know what I mean? Like we had like a certain vibe set for it and stuff. And it's just unfortunate it didn't really translate for us live, but I'm still really proud of the EP. I'm proud of us, everyone's input on it and stuff. I think we, I do think we killed it. Yeah, I get that. Uh, there's one song where it's like the chorus is like, what's it? This twisted air. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it stuck in my head like all the time. Yeah, it's I'm catchy. Like, That's my I'm my little brother did that, and he's he's like he he's nothing really. To, I mean, he loves music. He does like he plays guitar and stuff, but he's he'd never really written his own his own thing like that. And we just give him, we just trusted him to to put a chorus down, and he just absolutely like blew us away with it, man. It fits so well. Like it it chops up some of like the heavier parts because that song is pretty heavy, and then like that comes in. I'm like, oh. I was like, yeah. this is nice. <laughs> yeah, when we had him in the studio, like doing it, we were like, because he, he's he's a real like perfect perfectionist, and he, he's dead. I feel like he's insecure about his own things, even though he he absolutely kills everything. And we were just like, just, just do do what you think's right, man. Just do what you wrote, and and we'll tell if it sounds shit, then we'll tell you. And then he did it, and we were like, who the fuck is this guy? Like. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy, man. And we're, we're super happy with that. We're, we're going to try and implement more like chorusy style stuff in our in our LP, but mm. that came super naturally. So we don't want to force anything either at the same time. So we'll see. Well, I'm, I'm super stoked to hear like the newer stuff, bringing back some of that unrelenting force like vibe, but with like yeah. some of the, the newer elements and recording is going to be sick. Yeah. But, yeah. So happy for you guys. I'm really excited, man. And you guys are doing a tour coming up with Straight from the Path. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm, gonna be cool. I'm super excited for that. Like they're a band that I've listened to for probably 15, maybe yeah, probably like 14, 2010 around some something like that, 12 years. And to be playing with them now, like I mean, we've seen them grow from from what they were back then to now. And they're like a crazy big band now to, to get the opportunity to play with like people we look up to like that is another like massive moment for us and i think that we're, we're going to take that opportunity with like both hands mm-hmm. and really like give us give them give them all we've got man i think we'll be playing to a lot of new people but that like you just got to show up aren't you and you're playing to people who are unfamiliar with you so and i feel like we're good at we're good at stuff like that we're good at showing up on on the big stage man yeah just bring the energy blow people away it's gonna be great yeah which i mean you know stray fans expect high energy they expect yeah definitely drew is not you know reserved by any means on stage so definitely uh it'll be fun it'll be fun to get some new fans from that that side of the scene yeah definitely man definitely We're, we're we're like really excited for it and i think that the thing is when you get stuff like this you it's, you struggle to be in the moment like you're always looking for the next thing like when we got to Canada we were like 
talking about Australia and how good it was going to be. And then we, we had to like tell ourselves, yo, let's just enjoy this, this tour for what it is. And like, when we, when we really did that, we took ourselves back and like focused on Canada. We, we, we loved it, man. And we, we're dying to go back already. Well, come back soon. Cause that shit was so fun. And this time we can, we can meet up. Uh, I know that I can give you some, some good coffee, coffee, but, but I yeah. think your bandmates might appreciate it a little bit more. It's okay. Yeah, definitely, man. We'll, we'll change your, you might change your mind about the iced coffee. Yeah, maybe. I'm up for trying anything. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. I'm super happy that we got to, to, to chill and hang out. I have one question for you before we go. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite city for beans and breakdowns? Beans and breakdowns. You can focus more on the breakdowns if you want to. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like every, every, every place has like its own little thing. I don't know. What, what would you say? I can't say I'm, I'm, I'm non-biased. Non-biased. I can't, I can't choose, right? I'm the, the non-biased host. And I can pick like any city that I want. Whatever you want. It's got to be Manchester then, hasn't it? It's got to be. Well, yeah, I mean, come on. What's your, uh, what's the, give, give a shout out to the local homies. Yeah, the local homies. Yeah. Um, fucking who's, out. The, who's the top three that they should check out? The top three from Manchester. That's tough, man. There's not a lot of bands from, I'll give you like a general top three from, from like the north, north of England, northwest, north. Mm-hmm. Going sort of east, so we've got obviously Guilt Trip. Check out Guilt Trip for sure. Uh, Rough Justice, they're some of our best friends. Um, they're an amazing underrated band that we've got. Um, there's a band called Broken Down who've just released some new music from nice. around these ends as well. And finally, who should I pick? Hmm. It's tough, man. It's a I tough, know, it's hard. Tough question. Um, On the spot. Oh, from around here as well. I feel like there's not that many bands around here anymore. Like we used to have so many back in the day, and right now, mm, I, I couldn't even tell you who I'm listening to right now because they're all they're all bands that we've played with like this year. Mm-hmm. So they're all from like all over the place, like France and Germany and Canada and stuff. But I'll I'll give a shout out to. Um, you know what? I'll split. I'll split my decision to Manchester and Montreal, and I'll give it to Scarfold. Yeah, for sure, man. They're they're an amazing band. It was a pleasure to like experience that Canada with them guys, and 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 to be honest, man, we we couldn't have done it without them. So they they treated us so well, and like they housed us, drove us, fed us, everything, man. So they're they're some of the most like genuine guys we've ever met. We wouldn't have been able to do that at all without them. And we had a great time. So yeah, Scarfold, number one. Check check them out, please. Yeah. So good. Uh they're they're like they're like a hometown favorite because they bring so much energy. They have that like yeah. New York style, you know, like that Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of There's so not many bands that do that nowadays. Either they're like a really old school sounding band, I think. And and the, the they sound heavy live as well. Like I was blown away. <laughs> Because we, we listened to them on the way in and stuff, and we were like, yeah, these guys are sick. And then seeing them live, we were like, yeah, man, these guys are sick. <laughs> Underrated band, I reckon. No joke, it, it is like that. Like, I, I listened to their recordings, and I was like, obviously, great band. They're super, super yeah. good. But, like, listening to the recording, I was like, yeah, I can tell. Like, they're, they're you know, a hardcore band. They're from Montreal. That's sick. But then when I saw them live, I was like, holy shit, this is way, yeah. way good. Like... They set the bar, man. They were yeah. they were popping off every night. It was hard to follow them up, man. Every night, it was a lot of pressure, but they they absolutely killed it, man. Sick guys, fun yeah. to be around. Really nice. Shout out, shout out, Scarfold, man. Well, Jay, this has been super fun. Uh, I yeah, hope you guys it's been have, cool, man. Yeah, I hope y'all have a great time on that that straight tour. Um, we'll be thank looking you. out for new music. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beans and Breakdowns. I want to say a huge thanks to Jay for hanging out on the podcast. 
be sure to check out Guilt Trip. They have a few albums out, Rain City being their most recent release, but look out for more music and more touring to come in the next year. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. You can also find out more information about the podcast by following us on Instagram at Beans and Breakdowns or on the web at beansandbreakdowns.com. Until next week, be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up. <laughs>